Okay, everybody. So, um, first of all, I'm going to give you a quick um, uh, bounce myself. So, um, uh, I'm that handsome chap looking out at you uh, from the screen. Um, by trade, I'm an engineer. And that means that I'm obsessed with understanding how things work and making things. And that's what AI is all about. So, that's where we should be. Um, I'm the CEO of a company called DataWorks. And we're doing some exciting stuff with uh, big data and machine learning uh, in the e-commerce space. Um, if anybody is a uh, an expert in machine learning and reinforcement learning and that kind of stuff, feel free to give me a shout. I'd love to talk to you. We've got loads of jobs. Okay, so um, uh, I want to say something um, about uh, um, my my uh, community involvement. Um, the most prized award that I have is from the C-Sharp Corner for being their most valuable professional. Um, uh, the community is not just about online, it's about offline in a serious way. And I strongly encourage every single person looking here and attending these online conferences today um, to consider give back to community, okay? So write some articles, go and uh, do a few videos, stick something on YouTube, reach out to Simon, he'll help you get started in the right direction, and um, help other people, okay? It's most important, especially in the time that we have now, where it's so strange, um, that we keep helping each other. It's very, very important. So. The biggest message that I have to you for today is that everybody here talking today, we're, we're talking um, without payment, we're sharing our knowledge for free, um, we want you to take that knowledge to use it for the betterment of the world, for the betterment of mankind, to help your organizations and to help yourself. So just as we're helping you, we want you to help others. So please, um, it's really, really important to keep giving back to community. So, um, uh, okay then, so let's get down to business. Um, Today, we're going to have many amazing speakers who are going to talk to you about all sorts of different AI or artificial intelligence. Um, and you're going to be exposed to an incredible array of different technologies from deep learning to text to form analysis and even some crazy things like digital twins. Um, a lot of you might look at such technology and think, well, you know, I've got no need for this. Um, uh, I have no interest. It's not for me. Um, so in today's keynote, what I'm going to do is I'm going to address the point that uh, AI is everywhere, and no matter what you do, you can't escape it. Um, and if you don't embrace it, you're going to be left behind as an engineer. So it's critical that you start to get comfortable with it um, and that you start using it. It's not difficult, and it's no harder than trying to hook in into one of the, the hundreds of APIs that you use on a daily basis, um, either in your C Sharp or your Python or your C++, um, your REST APIs, your JavaScript, your React, your Angular. It's all the same. It's just an API. We use these on a daily basis, so don't feel threatened about this, okay? I'm going to lead you now on a short journey um, so that you'll understand what AI is um, and indeed isn't um, and how to identify problems that you can solve in a, a practical manner. Um, for folks who think that um, AI is not for them and it's only for folks who are crazy clever, this is not the case, right? It's for everybody it's everywhere, and it's an incredible time right now to be an engineer, so let's get started. The agenda for this uh, talk is going to cover three main topics. We're going to talk about what exactly is AI, um, how it's not rocket science, um, and how you can use it daily, um, and how to, to learn and where to start with AI in your daily work. So let's get started by looking at AI itself and understanding what it is and what it isn't, and what differentiates it from the other technologies that are mixed in with it, um, such as data science and machine learning. Um, so as an introduction to exactly what AI is, I want to talk about the difference between data science, machine learning, and then this thing called AI. Because folk get confused about this all the time. Hell, I get confused. I, everybody gets confused. So it's important to kind of, you know, draw out some lines about what it is. And once we do that, it helps us to better um, uh, embrace it in our daily work. So the best analogy that I can give you um, uh, about understanding these different things is driving a car, okay, and how that applies to these subjects. So data science is very much about being in your car, okay, and looking back in the rear view mirror, right? So we're looking in the mirror and we're looking behind at what's happened. And we're generating uh, insights from the data that we've already seen, okay? Now, up until a couple of years ago, um, it was referred to as simple business analytics or business reporting. 
Um, and, and data science, it, it does. It tries to look at data already generated and to make sense out of it, okay? It looks at clusters of metrics and trends over a period of time. From our car perspective then, from driving our car, data science is like looking in the rear view mirror of our car. We're looking at things that have happened before and we're merely commenting on them, nothing else. So remember, data science for this analogy is about looking back. Machine learning, on the other hand, is about looking at data we've seen previously and attempting to use that data to predict the future or fill in some missing gaps in data. It combines aspects of data science with machine learning prediction and analytics to help us look into the future. And machine learning by itself can actually be very, very basic and use some simple algorithms, um, or it can be very, very complex. So there's a number of different ways of looking at it. The key to using machine learning successfully, however, is to take it baby steps at a time, one step at a time. That's the key. Remember, sometimes the very best AI and the very best bit of machine learning can use is actually a piece of well-crafted SQL code. That's all, okay? Sometimes that's the solution. So from our car analogy, machine learning is sitting in the driver's seat, being able to see out our rear view mirror, but also being able to look through the windscreen, look ahead through the windscreen, okay? Now, with AI, artificial intelligence, we're going to take one step further again in our car driving analogy. Instead of simply using machine learning to predict the future and data science to look into the past and help support our future predictions, artificial intelligence allows us to let the machine take control. It allows it to take in all of the information and use that information at its disposal, that that's at its disposal to make independent actions and decisions. And that's the critical part. That's the key to the leap that we make from data science through with machine learning and onto AI. The promise of AI is that it can make decisions even if it has poor data available to us, the same way as humans do. Just like humans, it will infer where it can and it will fill in the gaps of knowledge in real time to carry out a task. It doesn't stop just because it doesn't have a piece of data. It doesn't break and say, ooh, I can't work. If we have an API, um, uh, maybe to send something to a printer and we don't send a carriage return or a line feed, well, then we keep printing over the same thing over and over again. It ends up as one big mess. AI would be able to detect, oh, there's no carriage return line feed in there. We need to put one in, okay? That's what artificial intelligence is about. It's about filling in the gaps and using what we know and what we think we know um, to be able to blend over those gaps and make decisions just like a human would do. From our car point of view, again, AI involves looking backward and looking forward and also looking around so we can see where we are in, in, in relation to other traffic. The other thing we can do is it involves monitoring, for example, the road ahead in real time to discover and make sure that we're, we're driving between um, the markings on the road. At the same time, our car is looking out for other obstacles and dangers like bicycles and pedestrians. Cars can be reasonably predictable. They kind of go where you direct them, mostly. Um, but those humans, that's a different story. They're crazy, okay? So um, there's a lot of uncertainty that an AI has to deal with. Um, and that's a lot of what AI is about as well, is about dealing with uncertainty and making the best judgment and the best decision. So that's what the car can see. But what about what it can't see? What about what it can't see? So um, at the same time as uh, our car is um, uh, uh, looking out and it's, it's driving the car, um, you're suddenly in a dangerous uh, or unknown condition, like maybe ice or snow or a sudden rain shower, a monsoon comes in and it makes the road like ultra slippy. What would you do? How would you make a decision? These are the kinds of very difficult problems that AI is asked to address on a daily basis, okay? But you can imagine that it's bringing together what it knows through data science, what it can predict 
with machine learning and it fills in those gaps. That's where the intelligent part is, okay? So AI is generally not about one single calculation. It's about a multitude of things, a whole multitude of things, all put together with various levels of accuracy, some better than others. And the job of the AI is to weigh all of these up and to decide what the best decision to take is. So it does this not only with the direct information that's available to it, like what it can see, but it also does it with other supporting information, um, such as maybe weather or traffic conditions, um, looking into your appointment calendar um, to see if it needs to divert um, and take a different route for you so you'll be on time for an appointment. Maybe there's an appointment that you can, um, uh, 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 is not as important as another appointment, so it can be cancelled. So the AI would automatically reshuffle your appointment calendar and bring you directly to the next appointment, but you'd be there early rather than two of them being late, okay? So the AI takes these decisions for you. It fills in the gaps and does what the human would do. So when we bring all of the different things that we know about AI together, what makes it different? What makes it different from data science and machine learning is its ability to learn and its ability to reason about the environment, about its tasks, and about itself, right? That's the scary part, right? And it, it, it does this by using as input, um, and also one of the key parts is, is that it's self-correcting. It's self-correcting to make a better decision than the previous one. The process of AI, of AI learning, is where the computer, because that's what an AI is, right? That's what we're dealing with. It's not like some kind of magic, black box in the sky. It's just a computer. Let us never forget that, right? Um, uh, this is where the, the computer gathers data and it puts together rules to turn data into actions. But we've seen this before. They're just called algorithms, right? Nothing to be afraid of. And as engineers, we know all about these things. So it's not an unknown concept. They're simply step-by-step -step instructions on how to do a specific thing or things. At the end of the day, it all boils down to Boolean. It either is or it isn't. It's true or it's false. Sure, there's some AI that's, AI that's going to be hooking into quantum and stuff, you know, at some stage. Maybe it already is right now. Um, uh, but for right now, we're, we're not there, okay? So it's nothing to worry about, right? Or is it? That was a quantum joke. So reasoning is where the computers decide which algorithm is the optimal one to use to produce the desired outcome that you actually want. And one of the things from Microsoft is AutoML, Auto Machine Learning. Um, and you, you might have heard of that recently. And it's a really good aspect of this um, particular um, point of AI um, is the, the reasoning part. Finally, self-correcting is where the computer consciously monitors its own performance and corrects itself and then keeps fine tuning um, all of the input parameters and the algorithms that use these parameters in order to adapt to changing environments and requirements and conditions, okay? This is what humans are good at. We're good at uncertainty. And this is also what AI is good at. It is good at uncertainty to a degree. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. AI comes in a number of different forms and you're going to encounter them in lots of different situations. First of all, we have strong AI, and then we have weak AI. Weak AI is also known as narrow AI, and it's appropriate because it deals with a very, very narrow field of focus, okay? A very narrow um, set of problems. Narrow or weak AI is really good at one specific thing. So, Let's take as an example, a robot. Okay, so this is a robot arm and it's on a conveyor belt in a factory. Maybe it's in a farm, okay? And its job is, as all of the, the vegetables come in and they're put on the conveyor belt, um, it's got to sort through them and it's got to categorize them maybe into um, big potatoes, small potatoes, um, uh, medium potatoes, and then uh, really strange looking ugly things that if the supermarket saw it, they would go crazy and, oh, I'm not letting that mutant potato into my place, thank you very much, send it back to all the other mutant AIs, right? So this is the type of thing that's incredibly specific, a robot arm that can look 
It can identify potatoes. It can identify shapes. It can categorize them. It can then move one off into a different conveyor belt so it gets put into a different package, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe you have a, another robot and its job is to take the boxes that are uh, collecting the, um, the potatoes in the different sizes and to lift those onto a different conveyor belt or to even put them into boxes that are then lifted by a forklift, maybe a robot, um, onto a truck again, okay? So um, strong AI, that's weak AI. And, and, and this is everywhere right now, okay? It's everywhere, right? You go and you do search, it's a weak AI, trust me, right? Strong AI is the complete other end of the spectrum. So if weak AI is here, 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 strong AI is right over here, okay? Right now, in the community and the world of AI, we're only here. People think we're here and robots are about to take over the world. They're not. We're only here, okay? We're nowhere near that yet. There's no need to be afraid. There really isn't, right? We're in control. Whatever Elon Musk says, right? You're a lovely guy. You're an awesome billionaire, but guess what? You're not in the real world, okay? So strong AI is where the computer has a form, and it's still a computer, okay? It's not a god in the sky, it's a computer. You can turn the damn thing off, all right? Strong AI is where a computer has a form of general intelligence, and it can replicate the abilities of a human brain. The human brain is the whole and the complete thing. A narrow or a weak AI can do one tiny, 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 infinitesimal little part of that brain, but it can't do everything. General AI or strong AI, which is where we're trying to head towards, is something that can do everything, okay? That's the scary one, but we're nowhere near it. We are absolutely nowhere near that yet, okay? Despite what some people would like to tell you, so don't believe them. Tell them they're telling porkies. Those types of AI, strong AI, really strong AI, and general AI, they are almost non-existent at the moment, but we are working towards them. But it is a very, very, very hard computing and scientific problem. So it's going to take a long time to get there, okay? Now, um, I'm going to ask Simon how I'm doing for time, because I know we're a bit tight today. Simon, how much time do I have left there? You can tell me in the chat window. I have seven minutes. Okay, and I've still got 72 slides to go through. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom really fast here. Um, the first thing you need to know um, about AI is that AI is not rocket science, okay? You don't need a PhD to work with AI to understand it. Um, and let's take a quick look at an example. I use this a lot, but it's really, really important to, to uh, understand this. Um, I'm not a math guy, okay? Um, uh, I run away in the room when they when they show me uh, complex maths equations, right? I'm an engineer. I do applied stuff, not theoretical stuff. And when I first look at this equation here, my brain went into like <laughs> multiple flips. There's not a hope I can understand this, right? Okay. Um, well, actually, no, it's a language like anything else. And once it's translated, it's not that difficult. What we're actually looking here is a symbolic representation of logic a method for doing something. It's a method for working through a series of actions to describe a particular outcome. This particular algorithm is actually one used for anomaly detection. In machine learning, simply, it tells us the average distance between a data value and its average. So um, uh, what does that actually mean? Well, when we translate this fancy mathematical algorithm um, into plain language, it makes sense. So let's just walk through. So what it actually says is, uh, find the average value between our data points, identify the difference between each data point and the average we've just worked out, take the absolute value of these differences, and then find the average of the differences, right? And that, my friends, is actually how you find outliers in data, right? And the rest of AI is no more difficult than that. Once you translate it from the scary uh, symbolic language, it just comes back to a set of instructions, and that's all it is, right? Inside in data science, inside in machine learning, inside in AI, we ask a series of questions, and there's only five of these, right? We say, is something this or that? Is it weird? Is it strange? How much of it is there? How many of them? How is it organized, and what should I do next? 
let's think about our potato sorter, right? Is this a big potato or a large potato? Is it weird? Is it a funky potato, right? Um, how many do I put into that box before I move to the next box? How is it organized? Are they clumped this way or that way? Should I spread them out? And what should I do next, right? That's narrow AI. It's really easy to do, okay? The big secret um, uh, that you have to realize is that there is only these five main questions, okay? And once you keep those in your head, you'll never go wrong with AI, okay? The first one we have is classification. It tells us if the data we're examining is one thing or another, okay? Is it A or is it B? The next one we look at um, uh, is, uh, is it weird, right? So we're a pedato. Is there a cat versus is there dogs? The next one we look at is we look at how much and how many, right? So how many cars are there in the way of the path that I'm trying to drive? Are they going fast? Are they going to slow? Do I need to change my speed to keep safely behind them? Right? All of these multiple calculations and multiple things that I do all of the time. Okay. Um, what should I do now and how are things organized that we've discussed? Um, and then the where next algorithm. This is the key one when we start talking about uh, AI because AI is about taking all of that information and making the best decision while filling in all of the missing points. That's the key part, okay? So we've looked at the core patterns that are there in, in uh, uh, AI and data science and machine learning, um, but from an AI perspective, it's not just one thing or the other thing. From an AI perspective, it's bringing all of these different things together you'll very rarely see an AI solution that's just one thing, very rare. Normally, all of these things are brought together, okay? So it's a mix and it's a mash. So now, um, the fine folk who are going to speak to you today um, uh, on this uh, amazing global AI tour um, are going to tell you about different areas of um, uh, specific areas of AI and how to use different technologies in AI. The key question, however, before you get started and you ever go there, is to know what kind of projects are well suited to AI. So the trick to identifying a good candidate for machine learning is to ask the following kinds of questions. First of all, are there inputs and outputs? Are they clear and can you measure them? So do we know that um, we have a, a, a particular um, threshold of cars that we are happy to be safely moving behind. That's our input, right? Our output is um, uh, what is the gap between these? And should I slow down or speed up to ensure that I maintain that gap from the input? Can the inputs be adjusted? And if they are, do the outputs change? Again, in my car example, if I'm driving along and I'm coming to a lane where there's a lot of cars starting to converge because there's different on-ramps coming in, um, if those inputs change, does it mean that my, my behavior should change? Okay, And clearly the answer is yes, I should either speed up to get through, I should slow down. Um, uh, if there is inputs such as um, uh, the weather, right? So as I'm driving along, I have maybe sensors on the ground. And what those sensors are doing is they're measuring maybe the heat of the, uh, the cement or the tarmac that I'm driving on. Maybe it's measuring the humidity in the air. Maybe I'm also at the same time, I'm checking where I'm going, right? From my, my calendar, my, my destination. And I'm looking up on Bing Maps, and I'm checking, what's the temperature like there? Is it higher than where I am now? Is it lower than where I am now? What's the humidity like? What's the barometric pressure like? What is the likelihood that there's going to be rain? Because if, for example, there's rain, we know that the, uh, the traffic is going to slow down, and therefore we're going to be s slower in getting to our destination, right? So maybe I should speed up now. But should I speed up now if I'm at that particular intersection where the cars are coming in right now? Um, because that might be too dangerous. Maybe what I should do is move more towards the center, right? And next question is, are there constants in the chain? Are there things that don't change? Well, there are. So in our car, um, there's me in the car. There's the maximum speed the car can go. 
there's how much fuel I have left. It might be a variable, but there's a maximum amount that I can carry. Um, and can we quantitatively evaluate better or worse? Well, from my car example, I suppose, I can say, well, better is I get from A to B safely, and worse is I don't, and I get injured, or worst case scenario, I die, right? Um, so all of these questions that we're asking are fundamental questions that AI needs to know to be able to operate and do its job efficiently. So when thinking about a project for AI, it's important to, first of all, to try and put boundaries around the problem of what you're trying to solve, and then ask these fundamental questions that I have on the slide. And the bottom line is that if you're able to answer those four questions um, positively, you've got a good candidate for an AI project. The last thing I want to do is I want to leave you with um, some resources that we can use um, uh, for learning AI. Um, and uh, I know that um, Simon put up a, an awesome example earlier on. I've missed that one, my bad. So Simon can show us that again later on, perhaps. Um, but there's two places that I know of that I'd like you to look. Um, one of them is um, the resources made available by Microsoft through Channel 9, which are absolutely awesome. Um, and the second one is the AI Business School, right? Don't knock business, right? The thing about it is that a lot of times the stuff that's done for business um, explains things um, in a different way. Um, and it might be easier for some folk to understand, right? So it's a good place to actually go and look at. And also importantly, it's good to be able to um, see the view of AI from business so you can talk to your managers, you can talk to the sales and marketing guys in your organization, you can talk to your customers with more authority in the language that they speak because it's really, really important to do our jobs. But when I'm asked what the biggest problem in IT is, it's communication right? So learning how to communicate with other folk in other different um, sectors and levels and parts of the business, it's really, really important. Okay, so we're at the end of our, our introduction, um, and now it's time to hand over to some of the incredible, clever folk that have given their time today and over the next 48 hours to tell us about a wide variety of technologies and topics surrounding AI. Some of the topics that you're going to hear about will include Microsoft Bot Composer, anomaly detection, um, ML ops, um, and using AI cognitive services. And you're even going to learn how to use AI to play better cricket, right? Which is pretty cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. I hope you have a, a really awesome and enjoyable time at today's and tomorrow's global um, AI live event. Be sure to join in, okay? Hook up on the, on the, um, uh, the YouTube channel, hook up on uh, social media, um, ask loads of questions, and most important people, stay safe.